This is a malicious USB drive. It has a sneaky HID implant, which is capable of running commands on computers that it's plugged into. While this isn't a novel attack vector, I was actually quite surprised at just how cheap and easy it is to build your own one of these devices. If you're interested, make sure to stick around because I'll show you all of the parts you need, how to put it together, and even program your own custom payloads. But first, let's see what this is capable of. Let's pause it here and break down what just happened. So HID stands for Human Interface Device. This is just a really fancy name for things like keyboards or mice or touchscreens or even gaming controllers. Inside of the USB enclosure is a tiny microcontroller that's acting as an HID. It's set up to function like a keyboard. So as soon as the USB gets plugged into a computer, that HID device just starts sending keystrokes over just like someone would be sitting at a keyboard and typing them in. In this example, it's using the Windows plus R key combination to launch up the Windows run prompt, and then it navigates over to YouTube for a quick Rickroll. Now, behind the scenes, it's actually also running some other PowerShell, which you may have seen, and this is actually to go and download a staged reverse shell and then execute that. And I was actually able to easily obfuscate this and get a reverse shell with Windows Defender all running, which I thought was pretty interesting. Now that we understand what's going on, let me show you how you can build one yourself. First off, let's crack open this USB enclosure that I have and take a look at the parts required. To make mine more stealthy, I put the parts inside of the enclosure for an old USB thumb drive I had lying around. I just popped it open and took out the PCB and USB connector for it. And then inside of it, there's only two parts. The first is a Seed Zhao RP2040 microcontroller. This is a development board built off of the RP2040, which is the same one from the Raspberry Pi Pico. I chose this one because it's really small to easily fit inside of a USB enclosure, and it's also cheap. You can get these for about $5. And then to make this more realistic and look like a USB drive, I just used a USB-C to USB-A male adapter so that it can easily then just be plugged in like a regular USB drive. Now, if you don't want to make your stealthy and fit it in an enclosure, you can also just use a regular USB-C cable and then program it that way and it will work just the same. The parts for it are that simple, it's literally just plug and play. So let's hop over to the computer now and I'll show you how to set this up and program it. We're going to be programming our board with CircuitPython, so we'll need to first set it up to be able to run CircuitPython. So to do that, head over to circuitpython.org and then click on downloads. And then you'll just need to search for the board that we're looking for. So I'm going to search for Zhao and it is RP2040. So this is the one that I'm using right now is the Seed Studio Zhao RP2040. I should quickly call out though, if you have a Pi Pico laying around or honestly a bunch of other different microcontrollers, you can actually follow these steps almost identically and it will work as well. However, this is the one that I'm using and I'll link this down below as well. If you want to pick one of these up, they're about $5. So we'll click here and then what we need is this UF2 file. So I'm going to download mine and then I'll see you over here once it's done. Mine's finished downloading. So the next step is to put the board into bootloader mode. To do that, make sure it is unplugged from the computer. And then there is a small push button with a B denoted next to it. So hold that down and keep it pushed down. And while you have it pushed down, plug it into your computer. And then you should see it pop up as a USB drive called RPI RP2. So what we need to do then is just copy over the Adafruit CircuitPython Suiduino file here. So we'll go here, we're gonna copy this, and then we'll just copy it over to the root of that RPI RP2. So I'm gonna paste this here, and it's gonna take about a minute to paste in. So I'll see you over once mine is done. Once CircuitPython is all copied over, the USB drive will automatically disconnect itself and then reconnect and you'll see it come back as CircuitPy here. So the next thing we need to do now is to install the libraries that we're going to need in order to be able to mimic a keyboard. So to do that, we'll actually go back over to CircuitPython here and then we'll just navigate over to libraries. And then the one that we need is this top one right here, bundle for version 10.x. It is the Adafruit. CircuitPython bundle. 
So go ahead and download this and then I'll meet you over once it's downloaded. Okay, mine's downloaded. So we'll just go ahead and really quickly unzip this. We're gonna go extract all. I'll let this extract. I'll see you over when mine is done. Before we finish up with the install, I want to really quickly let you know about the summer sale we have going on at TCM because we have some really awesome discounts. From now until the end of June, you can get 50% off of your first payment to the Academy, 20% off certifications, 20% off live trainings, and also up to $1,000 off bundles if you are interested in that. I'll drop a link down below so you can check this out yourself, but these are some awesome deals and they're going to be running all the way through to June 30th. Mine's done unzipping, so then we just need to go into the folder and then we're gonna go into lib, and then we are looking for one called add a fruit underscore HID. It is this one right here. So we'll just copy the whole thing here and go copy. Then we'll go back over to CircuitPy Go into lib here, and then we'll paste this whole folder in here. And now at this point, if you do want to make this more stealthy, you can go ahead right here and you can rename this drive. So if you want to call it something like, for example, mine was crypto keys, and make it a little bit more stealthy, you can do that right now. The way that CircuitPython works is that actually, if we go back to the root of it, there is this code.py file, and when it actually powers on, it's going to run whatever is in this code.py file. So let's open it up and take a look at how we can set it up to then function as a keyboard. Here's the code that I'm running to do the Rickroll and also do the multi-stage PowerShell reverse shell. I'll drop a link down to my GitHub repo that actually has this if you wanna copy it yourself so you don't have to do all of this setup. Up here at the top, we've just got all of the imports that are going to be required to run this CircuitPython as a keyboard. And then the things to note here is we can do this kbd.send to actually send uh, multiple keys together. So this is what's actually opening up the Windows R prompt. And then this layout.write is actually just the same as if there was a keyboard plugged in and essentially we're writing this so the first thing that it does is open up this Windows R prompt and then we just type in the YouTube link for that we're going to give you up. And then by default, it will just open up with whatever the default browser is. So for me, it's Chrome. And then we do a little bit of a sleep here. So you'll notice we've got some sleeps in here just to make sure everything actually functions. But if you want this to run faster, you can reduce these as well and play around with it. And then down here, this is where we actually start the reverse shell. So we start up another Windows run prompt. And then what we're doing here is actually just launching it through the command prompt so that we can uh, launch it as hidden and then do some execution policy bypass. And then we've got a little bit of obfuscation here to actually go and download the reverse PowerShell. So I'm hosting it on my attack machine, which is a Kali virtual machine. And then it's gonna go and download this PowerShell script into memory and then execute it. So let's take a look at what that looks like to set up on Kali as well. And then we'll run through this one last time before we wrap up. First off, let's take a quick look at the reverse shell in PowerShell that I'm hosting here on my attack computer, which is the Kali VM. So that is reverse.ps1. And this is a fairly basic PowerShell reverse shell that just has some slight obfuscation to it to be able to get around Windows Defender. So if you do want to use this one yourself, the only thing you'll need to do is just update the IP address here to whatever your attack machine IP address is so that it can reach back to the reverse shell. So we'll just close out of here. And then to host this, I'm just using the simple Python HTTP server. So that's Python M HTTP dot server. And then we need the port, which we're just going to go with the default of 80. And then we'll need to set up a listener if we're running a reverse shell to catch that back. So we can use netcat. So we'll go netcat dash n v l p, and it is on port 4444. And we'll set that listening. Before we run this, I do really want to quickly call out, if you're going to be trying this yourself, that this is an ethical hacking channel and you should 100% follow what I call the golden rule of ethical hacking, which is that you should only hack on devices that you explicitly have permission to. So either that you own or you have been granted full permission to. Do not go out and use this USB drive on other people's computers that you do not have permission to because it is 100% illegal. With our listener going, I'm actually gonna hop back over to the web server so we can see the logs when the script actually reaches out to grab that second stage. And then now I'll just plug in the USB drive here. 
And we can see that get request coming through for the reverse shell. And then now actually, if we hop back over, you can see that we get a connect back in. And since it's in PowerShell, we can actually just run who am I here? And you'll notice that we actually have that reverse shell. And then I'll just really quickly bring over here to show that Windows Defender is fully turned on. So this obfuscation was enough to bypass it. And this would actually work on a regular computer that is just running default Windows Defender. Of course, more advanced EDRs and security solutions are probably going to pick this up, but there's sometimes ways around those as well. In this example, our payload was a Rickroll by launching up that YouTube video and then also a two-stage PowerShell reverse shell. However, by editing that code.py file, you can set your payloads to be anything that could actually be typed in by a keyboard. I hope you enjoyed this video and it also helped to show one of the reasons why it can be dangerous to plug unknown USB devices into a computer. If you built one of these devices yourself, please let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed to the TCM Security YouTube channel.